Good morning. Please be seated. Uh, in the bulletin, you have the, um, a copy of the Lighting of the Advent Wreath. I ask that you please share with me as we um, prepare to light the second candle. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Today is the second Sunday of Advent and we will light the candle of peace. Last Sunday, we lit the first candle in our Advent wreath and celebrated the patriarchs. This first candle reminded us of our hope in Christ. We light it again as we remember our Savior born a king in the line of King David. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and we believe that he will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us to rule the world wisely and bless all nations. And we will now light the first candle, the candle of hope. Today, we light the second candle of Advent, the candle of peace. Remember, we remember the prophets who spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a Savior would be born, a king in the line of King David. The prophet Isaiah called Christ the Prince of Peace. They told us, the prophets, how he would rule the world wisely and bless all the nations. When Jesus came, he taught people the importance of being peacemakers. He said that those who make peace shall be called the children of God. When Christ comes to us, he brings us peace, and he will bring everlasting peace when he comes again. We light the candle of peace to remind us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and that through him peace is found. Peace is like a shining light in a dark place. As we look at these candles, we celebrate hope and peace that we find in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, light of the world, the prophets said that you would bring peace and save your people from trouble. Give peace in our hearts at Christmas time. We ask that as we wait for you to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your peace with each other. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. Truly we come, O Lord our God, Participate in this holy sacrifice 
And now please make an examination of your conscience. For penance for the confession you made. For the next three nights, I ask that you remember to say your evening prayers of our Father, Hail Mary, and glory be. And also to reflect upon the readings that are prescribed by the church for this, the second Sunday of Advent. And now, if you are truly sorry for the sins you have committed, I ask that you strike your heart three times, saying, God be merciful unto me, a sinner, and I will grant you the absolution. Before we do that, I apologize. Let us offer the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought or in deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you of your sins, and bring you into life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon, absolution, and remission of your sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he testified to the light. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, send your Son once again to judge the secrets of the human heart. May we who in holy fear await his coming to, as judge, joyfully regard him as our Savior. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Vincent, if you would please proclaim the word. A reading from the book of Isaiah the prophet. On that day, shoots shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide aright for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. The wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together. 
with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors. Together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. A baby shall play by the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all my holy mountain, for the sea, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, as waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse, set up as a signal for the nations, the Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. This is the word of the Lord. The gradual. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written previously was written for our instruction, that by endurance and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another, in keeping with Christ Jesus, that with one accord you may be with one voice, you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another then as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. For I said that Christ became a minister of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, to confirm the promises of the patriarchs, but so that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Behold, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men, for equal to his majesty is the mercy that he shows. Alleluia, Alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord, amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel, amen. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert. I am so sorry. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locust and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. 
And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His whittling fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Nick Benjamin Jesus Christus. I don't know, there are some times you feel like maybe you should go back to bed and try to start all over again. But I apologize and I thank you for your understanding. Last Sunday, we lit the first candle of our Advent wreath. It represented hope, and we talked briefly about hope. Hope of the world and our own individual hopes. Today, we light the second candle of our Advent wreath. It represents peace. Peace is one of the things that we most hope for. We read in the Old Testament of the struggle of the children of Israel from their enslavements in Egypt to their wandering in the de desert for 40 years to the destruction of the temple first in 587 BC and that this struggle of God's chosen would continue in the New Testament where we read of the enslavement and occupation of Rome. Throughout the entire history of the Jewish people, there has always been a strong desire of hope in God's promises and peace, as we read today from the prophet Isaiah. And so after the 4,000 years, of hoping for peace. God answered the cries and answered the prayers. Out of the wilderness there came a man named John who came with a message. It was a message of hope. Just as a shofar or ram's horn was sounded during the high Jewish religious celebrations, the voice of John the Baptist announced the coming of the Redeemer and the Deliverer. You know, it's interesting that even today, the shofar is sounded on the two holiest days in Judaism, Rosh Hashanah 
and Yom Kippur. Times that are set aside for fasting, prayer, and repentance. John's call was the sounding of the shofar, for John called for fasting, prayer, and repentance, as we who are a part of the Christian church celebrate a time of personal reflection and repentance. A voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding road shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. A voice of one crying out in the wilderness. You know, we're living in a time in our world, our nation, in our own communities and neighborhoods, that this message to prepare the way of the Lord must be taken to heart. John did not come with a parade or with balloons, but with a simple message to prepare the way of the Lord. His message calls each of us to prepare our hearts and our minds to receive the coming of the Lord. We talked about the patriarchs last week and we talked about the prophets today, but I say to you, Jesus declared that John the Baptist was the greatest of all prophets. As we reflect today, how may we prepare the way of the Lord? You know, Paul wrote to the church at Philippi these words. He says, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness. How I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer. That your love may increase ever more and more. In knowledge and every kind of perception. To discern what is of value. So that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ and filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus for the glory and praise of God. And so my brothers and sisters, the call for the season of Advent is to prepare the way of the Lord. It is a message that hearkens each and every single one of us to pause from our schedules, to spend time with God in prayer and reflection. You know, St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, sets forth a standard for successful preparation. Paul says, do not be conformed to this age but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. We prepare, my brothers and sisters, during the season of Advent, to grow close unto the Lord through the transforming of our thoughts and our minds and what we concentrate on what is important and what is not. And so may the words of John the Baptist be our rally cry. Prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen.
believing one of God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Then I call on the name of the Lord. O Lord, save my life. accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the hope and joy and peace you have given us. Impl implore you to accept this oblation we now offer. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The whole Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, O powerful and ever-living God, we do 
well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. For through the promise of sending Jesus Christ on earth, you revealed your goodness and unending love, sharing in the hope of the patriarchs and prophets, may we worthily prepare a dwelling place for him, the coming Messiah, in our very hearts. Therefore, we he join this day with the angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating on singingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, thou of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, goes on in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, goes on in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests. Especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess their true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. My brothers and sisters, let us remember this day. The sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, and especially the, the children who are suffering from the RSV syndrome. May we give thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and all healthcare workers. In our deepest prayers, may we remember and pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as all abused and neglected animals and all victims of violence, both here and abroad. May we pray this day for peace, for the people of Ukraine, and for all those who are suffering. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of all those who serve in our armed forces. And may we pray for all here present, Father, and their families and loved ones whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands 
and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you God his Almighty Father and giving thanks to you he blessed it broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat it for this is my body which is given for you In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the Son of Faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy. So part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, Revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching uh, and following the divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and vow safe to grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May they last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, those who will not be receiving the Holy Eucharist sacramentally, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. We will take the heavenly bread, and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces that he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, It is I who say to you, fear not, I will help you. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Heavenly Father, you chose John the Baptist to call us to repentance and to announce the nearness of the kingdom. May we, whom your Son has gathered around his table, praise and glorify you and proclaim your name before all the world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let, let us bless the Lord. Through your mercy may be effective for ourselves and for all those who we have offered it through Christ. Our Lord, Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with unending love. Thanks, Thanks God. God. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 